good evening everyone now um, welcome to the today's edition of the leadership lecture series i am also an alumnus actually because it's the first time we are actually doing this session as in person uh, we always used to do it as a zoom session for the last several months so it's it's always a pleasure and a delight for me also to kind of be in this room i am actually from the 199 btech batch civil engineering and currently lead the development office at iit as a ceo so i uh, would like to extend a warm welcome to uh, pradeep uh, who is the speaker for today's session uh, pradeep is the co-founder of tiger analytics a firm that focuses on developing ai and analytics solutions for global businesses Pradeep is an alumnus, as you know, of IIT Madras. He completed B.Tech in Civil Engineering from IIT Madras in 2003. He started his career by building mathematical models and economic simulations of cities. Subsequently, he later started working with businesses to bring scientific decision making into their organizations. Since its inception in 2011, Tiger Analytics has become a leader, a leading player in AI and analytics. with 3000 people across five continents it's the fastest growing company in the space and received multiple awards from gartner forrester nascom and financial times and you know how difficult it is to build a companies from the scratch and make it up to a strength of 3000 and actually you know thrive in this current competitive scenario right and uh, i i'll just quote Uh, we cannot control the journeys of life and entrepreneurship fully but there are things we can do to increase our share of luck says pradeep so today we urge pradeep to share stories and learnings from his journey that in 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 retrospect helped him put himself in the right place at the right time so with, without much ado i will invite him i will welcome him to today's session pradeep over to you we look forward to listening to you thank you thank you for the very formal introduction uh, it is uh, good to be you know it was it seems like only yesterday when i was sitting on that side i uh, glad to be uh, here uh, i always wondered uh, you know when when there used to be these talks why would every alum come and tell the same thing right it gets repetitive but said uh, i said you know if i ever to ever do it i'll i i too will do it it's it's a tradition right we need to do it so uh, so good evening everyone and uh, <coughs> so uh when uh, the alumni um, uh, association uh, uh, spoke to me about hey you know would you like to interact with the students and uh, what would you what you would like to talk about so i was thinking about uh, what might be of interest uh, to this group what is it uh, that i can offer um, as experiences or uh, advice and uh, said hey one of the things that i know enough is about ai and analytics but that maybe you know that's that something hey you no know, folks you can uh, if you google hard enough you will know so then maybe i said no that that that's that will not be interesting so let me share um my experiences uh from uh you no know, journey onwards from my you know graduation from um uh, iitm back in 2003 it's been close to 20 years now um what uh learnings along the way um right and uh, the last 10 plus years of entrepreneurial journey um uh, and uh, uh talking about entrepreneurial journey one of the things that people i've seen a, a lot of entrepreneurs being asked about and talk about is importance of luck uh in you know uh, in 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 that journey in once um, success to achieve whatever they have set out to do so said let, let's let's make this about luck right um is luck something that just happens to you or uh, is there something we can do specially uh, to make ourselves lucky right so i thought that we'll we'll talk about uh, that and um right again i'm no researcher to you know talk about this this topic but uh, no I'll, i'll try to connect the dots and uh, Uh, you know share some uh, stories right so if you want to uh, put it up please disclaimers first right uh, as engineers we need to do that so all of these stories or what we call narratives they're just meant to inspire uh, meant to give you some ideas your journeys will be quite different uh, your goals aspirations will be quite different so take it in that spirit uh, 
there will be you no know, things you might agree uh, or disagree but all this is uh, supposed to get you thinking uh, right so um so a little bit about me right so who is this person coming and you not know, talking to you uh, apart from the formal uh, uh, intro uh, that that you got uh, who is this person underneath if you can relate to me a bit more then uh, maybe there's the some more takeaways you can have so my roots right so i was um, i was born and brought up in this uh this a district in the southern part of orissa called it's called koraput right so i was born and uh, now brought up uh, there very nice place uh, nestled in the eastern ghats uh, right very peaceful lush green uh, etc but as with uh, as you can imagine eastern ghats in the state of orissa and it's a uh, uh, it's you no know, bordering chatisgarh and all of that so you can imagine when i was growing up there uh, it had uh, um, that was the poorest district in india uh, right by terms of number of people below poverty line and all that um, it is uh, it was uh, it's home to a lot of tribes um, all the health indices there are very very low so it's known as the malaria capital of the world so i didn't realize till i came out of uh, i came to iitm that hey, you know malaria is something uh, which is quite serious and it it doesn't occur every month uh, to kids um so so anyways uh, it was uh, this uh, and uh, you know, the place i was in less confusion right there is only one school to go to so no need to worry about hey, which school what what curriculum what syllabus uh, all that uh, you know kids these days have to think about it was a straight forward decision um and uh, i had a big dream at that time so there was a college nearby and uh, you know all my friends used to say hey you know we need to get into uh, bsc there so that was a big dream uh, for me right hey you know let's work to that let's get into uh, you know bsc there and uh, you know we didn't know anything much beyond that uh no life beyond that no you are in you are in the well or pond whatever you might call it right somewhere then my dad uh hears um around i'm completing my 10th that hey there is this thing called uh, you no know, iit and uh, maybe you know that he took a small risk by telling me that hey you can uh, maybe you know, try uh, you know, write the exam for that so that was the first time i was i'm hearing about something called an iit right so i don't know what what these things are but anyways no blah 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 i end up here life happens uh, no bunch of things happen then where uh, what do i do today right so um i've um, uh, i'm a founder of uh, no of tiger analytics uh, we spoke about uh, what we do today we build ai and analytics solutions right so how can ai analytics data help companies solve business problems that's what that's what we do right so we work with um so we're more than maybe 120 or so you know fortune 1000 clients you know who's who the big brands of the world you think about uh you know we work with them to build these solutions for you know a variety of their uh, business needs uh, today um right i think we are uh, close to 3500 people now across uh, seven countries um uh you no know, we started um, uh in in chennai um fast is growing in the space a lot of a uh, lot of recognition in general across the industry all of that good things uh right so now leave that that's that's the background right so now you know a little bit about who i am as a person right so you'll be able to relate a lot of you might have similar stories uh at least you know leading up to where you are i uh, you know you haven't graduated still uh so leaving that uh, with that backdrop let's talk about a little bit about professional growth right how how life will look like from a professional side for you as you as you step out into the real world uh, now um it's um if i were to plot it right we like graphs charts right numbers uh, i'm not including any equations so how might it look like so this one 
which looks something like this, right? This is what you might call hey, it's a stagnant uh, growth. Now, growth again, you define what growth is. I don't want to put, a, you know, I don't want to define growth, right? Each one of us will have our own definitions of growth. Then there will be something which looks like this, which we will call incremental growth, right? Meaning there is a step change uh, that you are working towards and you keep growing. And then there will be some things which will look like this, right? Which we call, you know, say, nonlinear growth uh, for now, right? We have enough uh, scientific terms now, right? And that green line is quite crazy. It can be anywhere. It, it might not fit into this slide. That might be a log scale. You don't know, right? That green line can go anywhere, right? That's, that's nonlinear growth. So how do these happen? Um, looking back at uh, several experiences, uh, several careers, several people I've worked with, can I, can I map uh, you know, certain attributes to certain things. Um, I try to do that, I try to put a framework to say, hey, can I explain this uh, to you? Right? So, could, this, this is an interesting one, right? So, one of the things they say, right, you know, life is like snakes and ladders, right? So, say, hey, let me use that analogy, uh, right, and then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to explain this. Um, so, coming back to uh, the whole, the, the, the growth part, professional growth part, right? How, how does growth happen? One, you need to put yourselves in the way of opportunity. Right? This is one thing you need to do, right? Because uh, that's when opportunities, you, know, you will you land opportunities. And two, it is how prepared are you uh, that when an opportunity comes your way, you can actually identify it and act on it. How can you know, can you execute on it when an opportunity comes your way? So we put it, we put this on a like a simple x-axis, y-axis framework, right? This, 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 this group where some people land up, which is you no, know, uh, which is if we are not putting ourselves in the way of opportunities, and we are also not you no know, preparing ourselves uh, right to act on it, etc that's the that's the stagnant part what we are effectively doing is we are waiting for good fortune we're waiting that hey someone will come knock the door uh, no hand us over whatever it is right so that big contract or that bag full of something whatever uh, you want you're just waiting for good fortune to happen this is like it's like wishing that hey i wish my grandfather was a multimillionaire and i inherit things right so that's waiting for good fortune this is the group or no, if this is someone in this bucket will not even know that hey I need to play the snakes and ladders game it, you, they just walk past uh, but you don't even recognize that hey you know that's that's the game uh, I need to play then there is the people who will hustle right who will think creatively who will you know, get into uh, you no know, network, get into you no know, way of opportunities, create those opportunities for themselves, but then they're not prepared. Uh, right? Fine, an opportunity comes. What next? How do I make use of it? You're not prepared, right? It's like, hey, I'm rolling the dice. I know I might get a ladder. There might be a snake which might uh, you know get me down. And this is the classic, uh, you know, snakes and ladders game that uh, they are playing. Now. All of this we are leaving it to chance, right? Now, what happens if you are better prepared, right? And I'll talk about how to prepare yourself, etc. But if you're better prepared, this this is what we call you know, will be incremental growth, right? You're not actively you know, looking for major new opportunities, but you're prepared, uh, right? You are executing well, whatever you're doing, incremental progress. It's like think of it: you're playing the snakes and riders game you know about the snakes right you know which snakes you have to avoid you know which snakes you can fight off but still there will be some snakes which will swallow that's okay but hey, you know now you have uh, you're better prepared you're better equipped to play the game right um, and then there is that top right quadrant which is what we call the nonlinear growth 
what is nonlinear growth in the context of a snakes and ladders game, right? It's you have a jetpack. It's a cheat code which has opened it's some superpowers. You are not even playing that game, right? So, um, what uh, no, what many of us will uh, you know find ourselves is it's um, the preparation and execution part is what we have learned all along right that's what we have been that's what you are doing now uh, as part of uh, uh, you know your uh, undergraduate or postgraduate degrees that's what you have done leading up uh, to this stage and uh, you know this is something we all know well right how to you know, how to learn things what what is it uh, the thing that you will uh, you are not taught is how do you put yourself in opportunities way that's something uh, you know we don't have any courses for that uh, but these two things need to happen in parallel if you want to if you need to unlock that nonlinear growth right so i'll talk about uh, each of these right and quote some examples how uh, how some of these things have helped me right all in retrospect you know, when you are doing things you might not uh, know you are doing it for that purpose uh, but hey, in retrospect, you can you now we can connect all the dots you want, right? So, <coughs> how do you put yourself in opportunities? Well, talk about a few things. First one, uh, taking small risks. When you think of risks, we always think of hey, it's um, right. It's not like a zero-one game. It's not binary, right? Uh, and we are not talking about hey, taking big risks where you leave everything, uh, you know, change whole course of your life, uh, you know, do something dramatically different. No, we are not talking that. Taking small risks, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, right? A little bit, little bit, and these things add up, and these things open up several, uh, you know, several new just perspectives uh, for you. So, and risks are also of you no know, variety of uh, you no know, different dimensions, right? So, they can be like no intellectual risks where you are risking about learning something new and failing at it right or it could be social where you are trying to um, you know make a specific social interaction connection network and maybe you fail at it right so those are those are those variety of uh, risks which might happen um, but these are small things that can you know dramatically alter the course of uh, you know how uh, uh, you know how your careers could uh, go so i'll give you an um, example from my uh, you know uh, personal life uh, right so um, i've completed um, this you know, back in 2023 uh, 2003 i've you know, done with my undergrad um, that is, um, you know, to think of it knowing my background now uh, you're saying that hey you know I don't know anyone who's ever left the country, right? So that that's my background. So then I say, hey, you know, but this could be a great opportunity uh, for me to just expand my horizons at that time. So can I take that risk to say, hey, you know, leave this behind and uh, explore a new country? Right? That's something, right? So maybe that's a small risk I'll take. I had um, I had a, a job uh, here, you know, placement season. A um, bunch of my friends were uh, you know, doing IIMs and all that, um, so I said, hey, those are all uh, you know, options available, said, let me do that. Um, then I said, hey, you know, I applied to a few universities, and uh, like a few, uh, you know, a few things where I got into. Then I, I'm, I'm faced with this, this, this dilemma at the stage. I have an offer from MIT, right? And um, then I have an offer from University of Texas. It, MIT is the world's best university and what uh, the offer I got from uh, University of Texas was to work with this one small group and I really loved what they were doing. Right? So, and so the more, like, you know, we have all our well-wishing friends, everyone said, hey, it's a no-brainer, like, just pick up MIT, go there. I said, you know, it's anyways a risk I'm taking. I'll take one more risk. This something looks like I might like, I'll enjoy, right? So I take up uh, the uh, the UT Austin offer. Uh, you know, I go join that group there. Wonderful experience. Uh, you know, it'll what it'll turn out that uh, that year I'll end up winning the 
know, best thesis in the US award and uh, uh, what not. But just one small decision quite dramatically changed what I would learn uh, in that phase, right? That's where I would learn a lot about mathematical modeling uh, there, right, with, with that group. Then all that's done, I'm nearing the completion of, uh, you know, that, that coursework. I'm almost ready to graduate. Um, then I'm not quite happy with the kind of opportunities that are available there, right? the, the jobs uh, that are available. Uh, all my friends have picked up you know, good tech jobs, uh, etc. And I am looking for, hey, what is that uh, job where I can really apply this you know, math uh, skills, right? Applied math, applied stats uh, kind of a thing. And graduation is neared, you no know, graduated. I'm still holding off uh, for that, looking for things. And in a very narrow minded way, uh, the risk I take is I have like some of these three companies in mind. All of them are uh, no name companies, you will not know. Uh, no, I think one of them has shut down, two of them have been acquired. I'm just waiting out, uh, you know, in all naivety, uh, I've applied on their website and I'm just waiting for a response, uh, right? And then there are all these, uh, you know, big banks and tech companies which have come, picked up people from the campus and I said, hey, no, 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 I really want to do this. Um, then I said, hey, you know, uh, being a generally an introvert, uh, I'd always significantly hesitated to cold call, right? Reach out to people unless they speak to me, right? It's, it, it was quite hard for me to go uh, initiate a conversation. But said, no, 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 this is, this is a small risk I need to take now. So I go to the website of this one company I was uh, looking for. I go to that leadership page. Yeah, I see there is someone was a 1992 IITM alum. So I send an email saying that, hey, we are IIT and I'm also an IIT alum and uh, no, I've been trying to get in touch with this, this but I haven't heard any uh, response. Can we talk? So the next morning I had a response saying, hey, can you come down for an interview? Right? I go to the, I, I do the interview that morning by the evening. He said, no, when can you join? Right? Uh, it's done. So and this person becomes my mentor for the last several years, right? He teaches me how to connect math to business. What are the challenges with uh, business? What, do, what don't we see in the business thing as engineers? Right? He becomes, uh, he shapes my complete early career uh, to become um, what these days you call a data scientist, right? Data science was not even a term uh, back then. Uh, right? So we were um, we were statistical modelers at that time. Right? So just saying, let you me know, just how small things, uh, small steps, uh, small risks can can shape uh, you know, your your uh, journey. Right. So sometimes when you keep taking these uh, small risks, you will notice that there are some big openings that will come up. Uh, right. Uh, and it will not be, um, it will not look uh, like a small risk anymore. Uh, and it will be like, hey, if you take that, you are leaving a lot behind, kind of a situation, right? Uh, none of the things that I spoke about was uh, no anything dramatic. These were small. So when those situations come and you have to make a, a choice to say that, hey, if I have to take this risk, I need to leave behind something. Then you leap. This is this is a this is a, this is a big lesson that again I've learned is you leap and don't look back. Never do the thing of having hey, two legs in two different boats, uh, right? So that rarely works. That's too much de-risking, uh, you know, when you try to do this. Again, I'll give a couple of examples uh, here, right? So, so I have this job, right? This new job, my you know, dream job that I had, uh, um, and then you no, know, I'm happy, you know, crunching away numbers, um, uh, you know, uh, swimming in equations and all that, um, and then um, you no, know, good job. I'm growing there, uh, you no know, good life, uh, you know, but it was uh, I used to live in Boston at that time. 
uh, and then and then there is this thing which is which I keep reading about uh, saying that hey this is going to be India's century right and then it keeps bugging me hey I'm I'm there and the action is here right uh, so um, then it it starts troubling you saying hey if I can continue this way and you no know, life will just go on uh, whatever right there will be that incremental growth but hey I might be missing out on the the development story of the century right uh, which is which is India uh, uh, right there so then I said hey you know I'll uh, let me explore what's in India right so then I start applying uh, right here looking at other opportunities etc and the kind of some of the offers that I get are are things which are less than what uh, were uh, you know what were considered good good offers during campus placements right but whatever be the constraints you have to make a call you need to take that leap right they said hey you know I'll, I'll make it work here this is where the action is uh, I need to make uh, that move right so said we're done I was 27 at that time right uh, like, you know, three years uh, working there I said you know move back so I show up in Chennai I'm um, you no know, I start uh, working here uh, and then I you no know, I continue to do similar work in a similar space it was uh, now it so happens that what was all this nerdy stuff at that time applied stats econ uh, uh, economics econometrics all of these suddenly start to look pretty cool come 20 2011 2000 uh, no 10 11 time frame right uh, oh then I was like hey you know suddenly I'm getting all these uh, you know when I speak or said I'm, I'm beginning to get some of these offers which were almost like my the salary I used to make in the US and I said oh, you know suddenly hey all the you no know, all is uh, you no know, geeks have become quite cool right this is uh, good stuff uh, it's what I think uh, then but at the same time again I'm thinking um, there's that entrepreneurship bug right saying you know, there's so much opportunity there's uh, you know, the whole AI ML was just taking off people were not even talking that language at that time and you know, I was looking at my clients and said hey, there's so much that can be done it's a huge opportunity um, uh, I think this is something I need to do right and that's you need I had to take that leap right which is take the leap the entrepreneurship leap uh, and then not look back to say hey if I had stayed back it stayed back I would have made uh, so much and uh, this I'm doing this by myself so I don't have a salary uh, no you know you again you think in in both dimensions then you'll never be able to uh, push forth right so that's how you no know, tiger analytics happened it was uh, uh, you know, 11 years ago now with this one of the thing that will help you open doors is working with people collaborate 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 uh, right um, I don't know no how how strong the whole relative grading concept still is in IIT I don't know how it works uh, now but it used to be uh, no, not 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 the best of situations during uh, my days, right? Uh, you know, this, um, but in life, for most part, it's not like a cricket match, right? Where one team wins, one team loses. It's um, it's not zero sum. Both teams can win, right? You you put ten teams in, ten teams can win. Those situations can be created, and if you can create those situations. And it will not happen immediately. Right? You will need to work to learn how do I create these win-win situations where everyone who is in it benefits. Then it will be people will open up a lot of doors for you. I'll give some of the examples, right? So there's um, there's this uh, there's this guy in my class back in uh, uh, back in the day, uh, right? And then um, he used to be you know take very good notes uh, in class. So I used to be one of those people where there'd be some class classes I would love. So I'd be on the front bench taking those notes. There'll be some classes where either you'll sit behind or skip, right? 
but this 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 my uh, this buddy of mine he used to be very good and he used to be very kind right he would give just before the exam day he would give you notes so that you no know, we can just take photocopies of that i think these days notes would probably be digital so we used to have a a you know, photocopier uh, shop in uh, taramani which we used to go at that time um and i think that that's the thing you learn about hey you know how people collaborate and you look beyond yourself for others to do well so we we have kept in touch since so he today uh, is the head of solutions at tiger analytics today there is there is another guy who used to take notes from me right second order <laughs> right and uh, uh, he used to tell me that before exam day would say what notes and all right you know this is not the spirit of learning right i will read textbooks so he would go to higginbottoms pick up he would buy textbooks like couple of days uh, uh before the exam and he would uh, read the textbooks and augment anything with my notes rest right and we shared a very good relationship we've kept in touch since he today runs platforms at tiger um right my first job um there was uh, you know, another colleague of mine uh, we used to work you know pretty closely uh, together um uh, you know, lot of we would have our own you know discussions arguments and all of uh, that uh, but then it was never about you versus me it's more about hey how do we push forward to get a solution right so today he is now uh, the cto of uh, tiger analytics um like there was uh, i i can take a bunch of people from my network in the past who i have worked with who you no know, things come back it connects back and then you end up working together again uh, so you take the collaborative approach and then people know that hey when i work together with this person we will work to create those win win situations right it it's not about hey someone is using me for their benefit but how do we create those win win situations right so um uh, Uh, whatever be the situation so this is something again i think i i, I just can't emphasize enough uh, how, how do you just go in with the intent to collaborate not to win uh, a deal right uh, how do you collaborate right so if that happens the rest will follow uh, and opportunities open up so these are the three things uh, i think i would highlight to say uh, how do you open uh, uh, open up new opportunities how do you get put yourself in a situation where luck happens uh, to you uh, right now how do you prepare uh, yourself uh, you not know, to be ready when such a situation presents your uh, presents itself to you and you know, how can you execute it well um one is any any situation you are in you no know, to learn deeply uh, right uh, and you have to trust that hey, all of this some day it will help me right so there is uh, i quite like this there's this this the, the famous uh, you know steve jobs comment commencement speech right so he talks about uh connecting dots this is says sitting now you cannot connect dots into the future but you have to trust that whatever you are doing some day in the future you'll be able to uh, connect it back um and i'll tell you how some of these this has worked uh, for me in the past uh, right so i'm here um uh, uh 2000 that things was 2000 year 2000 exactly uh, i walk into uh, you know advanced structural analysis uh, class um, and then um, our my professor at that time uh, professor devdas menon he says i'm not going i'm not teaching you structural analysis today right i'm teaching you the art of analysis right and you will find this useful no matter what uh, you do uh, in life and then that was an eye opener for us saying that hey you know you can look at all of these as key foundational skills that you are picking up it's just that 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 foundational uh, technique framework skill is being used in a particular context in that class but you can take that and apply it in uh, other ways right so uh, i i can remember several classes uh, that uh, even uh, right uh, you know specific things uh, that happened in certain classes uh, from my itm days but it was you know i ended up learning a lot about how do you model structures uh fluids flow right uh, soil foundations 
know, traffic, uh, rainwater, uh, sewage, uh, all of how, how do you build mathematical models to represent these? Because all of these eventually need to come together when you are planning for uh, you know, civic systems uh, or you know, when you are building structures, uh, right? So, um, this, uh, my next journey became what, what I did at uh, UT Austin was building models of urban places, right? Cities, utilities, uh, you know, how does, how do, uh, how do all of this translate into economic activity for people, right? And then, how can we use all of this to build urban systems? That was what I used to work on, I did uh, my research work uh, there, wa there was. And then from building models of uh, you know, analysis and models of structures to that of then models of cities, the next became for, for was models of customers, products, markets, prices, uh, machines, uh, marketplaces. This is what today data science is all about, right? So it that was the connect for me uh, that I uh, you know that I did at my uh, first uh, job. And, uh, you know, the journey cannot continue the same way when you are, uh, when, you know, when you become an entrepreneur. So, there's a lot of new things I had to learn uh, here, uh, while still a lot of that carries on. But, uh, you know, you have to leave certain things behind and you need to just plunge into other things that, hey, I had to learn about, say, sales and marketing or uh, know, managing people uh, to, you know, finance, operations, all of that. Um, but um, but whatever you are doing, if you if you learn deeply, it will come back, right? Of course, some things might not you might not be able to come back. I'm sure along the way, I'd uh, I'd spend enough time in other aspects as well, which might not have directly uh, helped me. But there will be some things which will uh, which will be directly directly beneficial, right? So this is uh, this is one thing. Uh, uh, as uh, something that's always, always, always helped me, right? Learning deeply, whatever, uh, you know, uh, we're working on right now. Uh, helps, helps you be prepared, right? Then, have execution bias. I, again, something I just can't stress uh, enough, right? So, people think about what is cool, ideas are cool, right? Uh, I'll come up with this new fancy idea that will change the world, uh, this, Oh, I've uh, you know, seen enough of that uh, over the course of time. Even no, even my, I myself would have said, "Hey, all these fancy ideas and all that," but that's just uh, you know, it's it's minuscule when you think of the large impact that needs to be made. All of the magic is in the execution, right? Ideas, uh, you know, you yourself sit for half an hour, you'll generate, uh, you know, maybe 50 ideas. Uh, you bring 50 people in the room, it'll just multiply, right? Tons of things will come up. But uh, how do you execute that uh, becomes the key. Um, and that's the boring part, right? So, prepare your project plan, put together the team, uh, start executing, it will be incremental progress, uh, you know, it's like, hey, you know, of, of the full machine you are building one small uh, thing, that will fail, go fix it, you know, quality check there, get feedback, revise, done, rinse and repeat every day, day after day, super boring stuff, right? But be boring, That's uh, that will get you places. Uh, it, you. Um, if you, there will be a natural attraction to do the, the cooler stuff, right? Hey, I'll, I'll ideate, but don't fall in that trap, right? If you can execute well, execute an idea well, there's a severe, severe lack of people in the world who can execute well, um, right? So, um, something uh, to keep in mind, right? Then the other question becomes, um, <coughs> you're working on, uh, on this, on something you hit a, you hit a roadblock, uh, right? Um, what do you do at that stage? Do you push forth? Do you shut shop, right? Do you pivot? Then again, again, there are a lot of these questions, right? It's like you're dealt, uh, uh, you're dealt some cards and there's whatever you're playing, like poker or whatever, right? Do you hold them, 
let the rounds go or do you fold them it's so that's a uh, that's a big question that you will face in a lot of situations whether it is in entrepreneurship it gets amplified but even if uh, uh, even in uh, uh, whatever job you might uh, 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 take up uh, your your first jobs that you might take up you will face the situation where is this the is this a job i want to do hey it's not providing me with this is this should i push forth make that happen or should i change right uh, you will get a lot of conflicting advice uh, right so there'll be one so there's one group majorly all these motivational posters which will come up hey, never give up right grit uh, you fight hard enough you can make anything happen you can move mountains all of that then there'll be this another uh, the, the same person on uh, no next day their uh, uh, whatever no instagram they'd put up right no fail early fail fast no fail often break things move on right all of this like, what uh, no, you do you wrong you're, you're saying exactly opposite things uh, by doing this so what do you do right uh, there's no right answer uh, again in different situations different things will apply think of don't take this literally but the question more is you are in a juncture and you need to decide hey should i change course or should i push forth right uh, um and at that time the only reason you need you'll push forth is if you have a plan and you are tracking the plan and there is a certain expectations you have from the plan right saying hey if i do this there should be this incremental changes happening if you don't have that then just randomly pushing forth doesn't make sense uh, right and at the same time if you don't have uh, the the plan and uh, you're not even attempting to have the plan and then you pivot saying that hey you know fail fast no fail quickly that's the motto is done let's move on kind of a thing you'll never be able to go go deep beyond a point right when the actual magic happens a lot of the things we might just hit the surface level and then uh, move on right that that's not where things actually move so uh, you know something that um, you will need to appreciate that hey these are situations you will face and you will need to learn uh, how how to navigate uh, through these situations um no right or wrong answer don't don't just follow one of these two things and have those posters uh, if 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 needed keep both these side by side to know that hey life is full of contradictory advices right from people uh and you'll need to learn how to make uh, those decisions so i can give an example uh, of this from uh, you know my uh, you know entrepreneurial journey um it so we started tiger in uh, this 2011 right um it was a small like you know we had a, we had a couple of uh, uh, no a few clients we were uh, uh, no bit uh, no it's a bootstrapped company and all that uh, you know whatever at that time it was a million dollar valuation uh, of the company uh, and you no know, we were working we built the company come to 2015 it had uh, no now there was a pretty big investor who had come to us and then said hey you know this is a is a very hot area uh, right ai and uh, you know data science and uh, analytics uh, you know we want to grow this so we want to acquire you guys right and they made a pretty lucrative offer uh, right so and suddenly we were there looking at us and you not know, that two of us founders hey it's a chance to become uh, you know multi millionaires uh, right uh, uh, you know what do you do right at that stage you should should be uh, good it will will we'll still be the founders will still be the management uh, it will still be tiger analytics but uh, you know should we de-risk ourselves should we sell so I said no it was it was not about the money more at uh, when you when you dug deep you know you are you are out there you are trying to make an impact then we said uh, again we asked around and then you'll get a lot of advice people uh, the most common advice i say it's a very renowned uh, uh, investor you would be foolish to say no right just take it up right you built you worked so hard you built it this uh, it 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 takes really substantial effort to go beyond so sell right so we got that advice 
enough deliberation and we said no we have a plan we are growing and we can execute it uh, let's move forth right so then we, we keep moving forward come 2019 we get another offer right this time it's bigger it said hey you know really interested in this space it's it's going quite well uh, and all that this time it was a bit uh, again both right we said hey you know we have you know, put in close to 10 years of effort uh, this what do we do but then this time now we are much more confident we have a plan it's working um, and then uh, no nope, let let's go forth right and and mind you from from 2015 to 2019 we might have, we could have gone from that orange circle back to the white cycle. Right? It, it's, it's, a, it's a very realistic feasibility and that's the risk uh, you are taking when you do this. So, but, and in 2019 we said, nope, let's, let's go forward, let's, uh, no, let, let's push forward, let's build on our own. And where we are today in 2022 is we are somewhere this. Uh, right? So, it's uh, some of these you know the risks some of the you know the uh, the bets uh, you take can pay off but you need to be equally prepared that hey you know when it it could have gone the other way around as well uh, but you no know, you made the call <laughs> you need to uh, stand by it um, uh, and uh, over a period of time but keep learning at every juncture when you fail to say uh, you know, I could have cashed in uh, my chips earlier, but I did not. Or saying that, hey, I could have, uh, you know, cut my losses before. I could have pivoted before. Or I could have not wasted my time pushing forth on these things, but done something else. There are all these things that will come up. But uh, so long as you you form that mental uh, framework of uh, and and learn from that. Uh, that that will hold you good. The next time uh, you won't uh, make uh, uh, the, the same uh, mistake, or uh, you'll take similar bets. So, um, so that's that. The learning, uh, understand that it's not. Don't go by that. Either never give up or fail fast, quickly, move on kind of a mindset. Different things will apply in different situations. That's what. La that's the point I wanted to drive. Yeah. Um, so these are these are some stories and these you know, some learnings uh, I wanted to share. Um, again, you know, wanted to reiterate that these are just uh, these stories are just meant to give you some ideas. Uh, you know, think about uh, your next steps in your jobs. How you think about it. A lot of them can be applicable uh, even in your uh, what you do day in uh, day out here today. Uh, you will set your own goals. You will have uh, each one of you knows. At least roughly, what where you want to go in the mid term, if not the long term, and uh, accordingly, you will chart your own courses. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, uh, those are things I want to share. It's been uh, no thank you for giving me this opportunity, and uh, it's a pleasure interacting with you. I'm uh, open to any questions if you have any. This is Abhishek from third year civil department. I just wanted to ask you that: uh, Were you passionate about entrepreneurship when you were in college itself? No, no, absolutely not. I'm an accidental, uh, little bit of an accidental entrepreneur, by the way. I was, uh, I wanted to do just tech stuff, uh, right? And then um, it is, I think, uh, once I started working, then I started reading about, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, startups, and all that. And I was absolutely not sure how do you even go about doing all this, right? It seems like so alien. Um, so, uh, but you have to start somewhere. So I, I, I did a few things, got together with a few people. We, we tried to do something in sports analytics first, uh, right? But we did not know, hey, how to take it, who will be the market, etc. No. But in the process, you meet people, uh, you meet both like-minded people who bring some uh, very different skill set, uh, right? So, and then uh, those those meetings, those discussions helped me when I met my co-founder. Uh, it uh, uh, happens to be from IIT Bombay, um, but uh, but that's how this journey took up. Uh, but at that time, uh, it's quite quite far. I, I I never thought so far at that time. Okay. And the second question is like, can you briefly describe first year after you started uh, your own company and like how did you get that first business client and how did you convince that this is the upcoming new technology and this will our solution will help you to grow so 
Yeah, is that you are asking, hey, how, how do you sell? There are, um, at that time you need to, you need to see what is it that they are looking for, uh, right? Sometimes the opportunity will come in a very uh, different form, uh, right? So, so this was, we were speaking to someone and, uh, you know, they were talking about, hey, you know, we need someone, the discussion went something like this, right? hey, we need someone to analyze this data, uh, you know, it was uh, you know, some financial planning data and you know, it, it's a mess, it's, it's not working up, you know, we are overshooting our budgets, uh, all that. Uh, do you know someone? Right? It was some network this. And then we were asking, then we, we went a bit deeper, why is it a mess, why are your budgets overshooting and, and all that and they said, hey, this, uh, you know, it's a railway company, right? And hey, we have all these uh, you know, uh, trains and then uh, what what happens is uh, you know, some of uh, we have sensors embedded on the rail tracks, uh, and when a train passes over them, uh, you know it detects whether or not uh, it's uh, you know a, a wheel has gone faulty. One of our sensors has gone faulty, and it's telling that all the wheels are faulty, right? So the the repair shop has just replaced all the wheels, and it's just overshot budgets for this. It just conversations, right? <coughs> then I said, oh, you know what? We'll bring you, we'll build you a, a piece of software which will tell you when is it that a wheel is faulty and when is it a sensor is faulty. It's statistics, right, there. Um, then said, okay, you know, you do it, uh, if it saves me money, then, uh, you know, I'll implement it and if, if then I'll pay you. It, uh, we, we nice that, right, if it doesn't work, don't pay us, right. So, then we went, build it out, right, it worked miraculously. So, today, this was a client in North America, so today, the whole entire uh, rail network uh, in 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 US, Canada, Mexico, etc., uses this algorithm to detect that. And there are, we we go on to build a bunch of other algorithms uh, for them uh, to do that. But these are like conversations can start somewhere and go somewhere, which is where it, I think you have to trust that hey, if I collaborate with them, I'm I'm here to help you, right? And then. Uh, because we were a consulting firm, we could take that approach, right? If you're building a product, you need to take a different approach. But that's all the first and thing. And the happened. last question, uh, like how was your transition from your job to startup? Like uh, you were building something gradually while, while you were in job or it was like, this is the moment I'll stop doing my job and start my company. Yeah, yeah. My, again, uh, I, I don't do a whole lot of uh, two things. That's my personality. Uh, if we have to do something, then just uh, you know, dive in. Uh, so I, I stopped working and then uh, I started uh, doing things. Transition is not easy uh, because if whenever I, when I was working, the maximum number of people I had managed was two. Right, that was my team size. And then suddenly there are all these new people. I need to project a face of confidence and say, hey, don't worry, like we are this, we'll do this, etc. Then no, you need to be. Uh, they're looking up to you uh, to guide them and all that. So it, it's very, very rapid learning, uh, extreme. You have to keep your head above water somehow. <laughs> thank, thank you, sir. Hello, sir. I'm Nandan pursuing MS here. Sir, uh, when you were building your team, when you were uh, like uh, choosing your friends to be your partners, what was it uh, uh, in your mind? How did you choose your partners? Uh, was it because it was uh, uh, you were uh, colleagues, you were classmates sometimes, or it was because uh, sometime you had uh, you have seen their work or something like that? How uh, my question is: How do you plan your? Uh, how do you choose your team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there will be. Um, uh, it's not again not not no binary answers. Um, so there will be certain. Um, roles where the technical know-how is the most important uh, right and they that usually tends to be a little bit more at the uh, junior to mid levels as as you go up the technical know-how is important but that does that's not the most important thing a lot of it becomes just your you know, tenacity to hold on to a problem solve it uh, bring people together to solve a problem and all of that, right? And then uh, these are a lot of people who I knew that hey, they come with a very good attitude, uh, right, to, to problem solving. And I knew that they might not know what what is being done uh, right now, but hey, these are these are all smart people. Uh, uh, 
uh, right? They they have uh, you know gone through some of the uh, right, like all of you gone through some of the toughest exams uh, and all that. So it is, and with the right attitude, they can uh, you know uh, pick up if need be. Uh, so it's a mix. Some of them were I knew they were like already. Some of them grew into those roles over time. Um, and um, and and the first few people were not my friends. Right? The first people, first few people were who you know I hired uh, outside, uh, right? And uh, yeah, and then the first person actually, the first person who I hired, who had uh, was uh, I go to the office, and that day he calls me saying I'm not joining your company, right? <laughs> so uh, it's that that's how uh, the hiring started for me. Um, yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. My name is Rohan. I am also from Koraput and my B.Tech is from Mechanical. Now I am into Data Science. So I think life is not always a merry-go-right for you as well. So you just showed us the positive things upside here. I wanted to ask that, uh, like how do you handle failures in your life and uh, some of the, some examples that you can share us that we can learn even from that. There are uh, there's a lot of uh, lot of things along the way. Right? There'll be a lot of downs uh, along the way, especially especially when you are an entrepreneur, uh, right? So and uh, there are people who trust you and you and join your team, right? And then imagine that hey, the clients you have you are working with a few clients, and uh, some of the clients say, hey, you know, we are running short on budget. Uh, and then uh, you know, let's stop what we are doing right now. You no, know, we'll again work together in the future. But then you have salaries to pay, right? And then it's a, that's a very very tough situation to be in because you no, know, you know there are there are people, there are families who have trusted you that you will provide them uh, with that uh, you know that that stable thing. If they were if they were thinking of hey you know I would go through the ups and downs, they themselves would have been entrepreneurs, right? Uh, but then there's something you promise, and then you are not in a situation uh, to deliver that. That becomes uh, no quite uh, quite stressful, uh, right? And then you keep thinking about that. You go into those loops. You find it hard to sleep at night. <laughs> all of uh, all of those happen. So there were a couple of uh, some pretty tough situations uh, for us as well uh, along the way, uh, right? So same way, for example, there was there's one situation where. Uh, uh, we were about uh, 12 people, right? Uh, early days as a company, and uh, we'd build a very good team, right? Uh, very strong technical team uh, at that time, and there was some company, some multinational company, which set up uh, a new office in India, and I think some recruiter from there got creative and then just hired five of uh, the 12 people uh, from the team. It had taken me two years to build that uh, 12 people team, right? So it's like you feel like, hey, you know, your life's work has been uh, taken away uh, from you. But it is, uh, no, but that's uh, that's life. Uh, move on. <laughs> well, no, nothing much you can do, right? Rebuild. Uh, and uh, no, you, you learn a few things saying that uh, we need to, we need to get to a critical mass quickly, right? Because if we are still there, that 12 people or so, we need to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's let's amp up on you no know, sales and business development, and so that we can get to the stage where losing five people uh, will not hurt the overall uh, company, right? So there'll be, how do you get there quickly, right? So it gives a new sense of urgency. Uh, so uh, situations like these, and uh, there there'll be there'll be ample, right? Say for every positive story I'm telling there'll be 10 such <laughs> uh, stories where you've taken a big hit. Hello. Uh, sir, so I had a question. You had shared that uh, you, uh, your first client, you worked on a software to track whether the wheels were wrong or the uh, sensors were wrong. So uh, what I wanted to know is like what the company was working on before that, like before the first client, you got the idea for something to sell to the client after you spoke to them. But what was the company working on before that? Yeah, so uh, we, so we were, we were, uh, we started as a consulting company, right? So meaning what was that was, 
they said, hey, we are people who are very good at building algorithms and we can solve a variety of problems, right? And then uh, each of, and uh, the way it works in this space, you know, for most part is every, let's say this company had this problem, right? This is a very unique problem to this specific company and you no, know, 90 percent of the other uh, companies would never have this problem. So products for such things don't exist. Right? And the world is full of these problems. So how do these problems get solved? There are, uh, there are people, there are firms like us which build custom solutions for that specific thing. Right? So that's what we do today. So we, it's not like hey, we have one solution and we go sell that solution. Uh, we build custom solutions based on what the problem of a particular uh, client is, right? whether it could be things like uh, how do you optimize marketing, how do you enhance sales, how do you detect fraud, uh, right? how do you uh, detect uh, machine failure ahead of time. Uh, right? so, so things like this, there could be a variety of uh, you know, these use cases. Um, so that, that's what we do, we build custom solutions. So, so uh, before you knew that this was a problem you had to tackle, like what was the company doing? Was it just like studying the field or? Ah, no, so um, so I, I think I, I get your uh, question now, right? So it was it was not like we were, uh, uh, you know, you know we were there waiting for this opportunity to come so we were we were having a lot of conversations right so for example how do you start how do you have conversations right so there are uh, the, the the best way to have conversations is if you have a particular topic and you want to know what's what are people thinking about this topic what are the opportunities best way then sign up for a conference right where people in the industry for that topic are coming together to speak right and you go to the conference uh, you know the topic well, you can present it in the conference, then there maybe there is someone who is interested and they might say come and say hey can you help me on this or there is you are speaking to people and people are talking about what their problems are, maybe you can say I can help you on that. So it was one of such conference, no such conferences this, this conversation happened. Right, so. <coughs> so how do we handle success? Because it's easy to get carried away and we overconfidence. Very, very abstract questions. How do you handle <laughs> <laughs> success and failure, right? I, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, I don't know, I think I, I, I never had to think too much about this problem, right? It's so, uh, <laughs> instant uh, quiz. Uh, I think when, if especially if you're, um, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, you will have both, uh, right? So you will you will not get carried away too much by success or failure. When you will hit, uh, really get hit hard, you know that hey, this is temporary. You know, I, I've I've tasted, I've seen enough ups that I, I'll come over it. When you hit a high, and you know that it's okay, right? Uh, <laughs> there's another life will ground me again soon. Uh, so it 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 will balance you out, uh, and it just need not be entrepreneurship as well. Like all of you, you have I'm sure you had your fair share of ups and uh, downs, um, and uh, it's just uh, I think just keeping that in the back of the mind will keep you grounded, right? Whether it is either way. Uh, so how many of you just just out of curiosity, how many of you are thinking of? Uh, Potentially being an entrepreneur someday, if not, if not immediately after college. Uh, that's, uh, that's no, no, that's uh, it's very, 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 very heartening to see. This is, I think, maybe this is what when we said hey, this is going to be India's century. Uh, this is this is what it is. Uh, and entrepreneurship can be can come in different forms. Right? It need not just be you starting something independently, like creating something from scratch. Uh, there could be a variety of collaborations through which it could happen. But glad to see that uh, you know, half of the group is uh, you know, thinking uh, uh, that way. Uh, and, uh, and of course, thought processes will change over time. Uh, there will be other people who will be interested. Some of you might choose some other paths, but good to see. Thank you, Pradeep. Thank you for that very inspiring session. And uh, let's give him a big... A round of applause for this.
you know the the beauty is that like whenever you listen to an entrepreneur right because his own or her own experience has been so intense and they have been through a very intense journey that these are like you know there are some sentences which everybody at any point of stage in life can actually relate to and kind of learn from right thoroughly enjoyed the conversations some of those points that you mentioned that every stage i think is really relevant and i'm sure that all the students here will also find this very enriching conversations i've taken a snapshot of couple of your slides and already shared with a lot of my friends actually so thank you for that and thank you everyone for joining this session this evening and I th- i'm sure that you found it very useful too um on behalf of I I don't think I need to wish you on behalf of IIT Madras community because you are also a part of the community here but for the sake of formality allow me to express our sincere gratitude to you for uh, you know coming here this evening and delivering this session I hope all you all of you have a great evening thank you yeah.